People think that the Ouija board is just a game, but how many games have the ability to possibly summon a demon? Can Monopoly do that? I don't think so. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content and live chat. But for now, sit back and relax. I'll lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. Right before the new year, when I was a sophomore in high school, my best friend and I got out her old Ouija board. As she placed the board on the floor between us, she told me with great emphasis a set of rules I was supposed to follow. Like saying out loud, break, before taking my hands off the planchette. She claimed that the spirits that come through the board are very real, so it was important to show respect and follow the rules. But I prided myself on being an atheist with no superstitions. I never knocked on wood, threw salt over my shoulder, or engaged in any superstitious activities at all. So no evil spirits were going to scare me. Confident that my disrespect would secure my place as the most rational 16-year-old in the entire universe, I made a big joke out of the whole thing. To my friend's great concern, I taunted the spirits, denounced the entire activity as dumb, and I went out of my way to ignore all of the rules and formalities, like refusing to say break before taking my fingers off the planchette. When we first placed our hands on it, I was a little startled that it moved without any effort at all on my part. But I shrugged it off, assuming it was my friend moving it. I kept mocking and taunting the spirits, but I was interrupted when the silence of the house was shattered by a loud ringing from the next room. It was the phone. My friend began to freak out, because that phone was a landline, and it hadn't worked in years. She did not answer it. A few weeks later, we decided to play with the board again, but this time at my house. She brought it over, but we never did get around to playing with it and I just assumed she took it back home with her. Then one night around 3 a.m., I woke up from a deep sleep when I heard a thrashing noise next to my bed. I turned on the lamp, and there on the floor next to my bed was the Ouija board. Now that really scared me. Where had it come from, and how did it get next to my bed? The rest of that year was just awful. I was involved in multiple car accidents, and some other bad stuff happened to me too. But the worst of it is that I was mired in a strange kind of depression. I'd experienced bouts of depression before, but this was different. I was simply unable to be happy, and there was something even darker, a constant feeling of doom. It was a fear that infected me on a visceral level, though a fear of what? I didn't know. I also developed a hateful streak, one that had me saying the nastiest things to people with only the slightest provocation. I wasn't just an unhappy version of myself, it was like I was a different person altogether. For years I maintained that there was nothing to the whole Ouija board thing. Even when I first started to believe in God, I would still roll my eyes at the thought of a Ouija board. I claimed there was nothing dangerous about a game you could buy at the toy store. But then I actually started to read the Bible, and I saw that even in the New Testament, it talks about evil spirits and their powers. Then I looked at world history and began to see evil forces at work, forces with intelligence and purpose behind it. This evil presence is so strong, I wondered how I could have ever overlooked it before. I started learning more about the reality of supernatural forces and the importance of knowing how to distinguish between the good and evil forces. When I thought back on my experience with the Ouija board, I saw that even though it looked like a $20 game, it was still a portal that allowed evil into the world. It doesn't even matter if you believe in them or not, evil spirits can and will come through. In fact, they're hoping you don't believe in them. That way, you aren't being cautious, and it makes it easier for them to enter this world. And maybe even you. 
When I realized that, I knew I had been the subject of a spiritual attack through my own ignorance of the power of the Ouija board. My mom went to a religious college. She was with some friends one night at a house they rented for spring break. There were about 15 people total. They had just had dinner and were hanging out playing games when somebody brought out a Ouija board. Mom didn't participate. She just sat there and watched them. My mom told me this story many times over the years, and the details have never changed. And she's not one to make things up, so I believe this story 100%. Eight of the 15 people were playing. The rest were watching. They were asking a lot of questions, and the planchette was moving around. But with so many people with their fingers on the pointer, she didn't know if one of them was moving it, or if it really was a spirit. There was a girl there that my mom didn't know very well, and she was really getting into the Ouija board experience. They knew there were certain things they probably shouldn't ask, but this girl kept asking really specific questions. They started out pretty innocent, but then she started asking questions about demons and wanting to see dead people and know her future. The rest of the people there were starting to get freaked out and wanted her to stop, but this girl refused to stop, and she kept asking questions. She finally agreed to put the board away, if she could ask one final question. She said to the spirit, I want to see you. The rest of the group really freaked out, but before they could move the planchette to goodbye, the planchette moved over to yes, all on its own, in response to her request. Well, everybody there lost it. They said goodbye to the Ouija board and put it away, and then they started playing charades to try to lighten the mood. While they were playing... This girl happened to be sitting closest to the door, and my mom was on the other side of the room facing her. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, and since it was late at night, they all kind of froze. They were all still a little freaked out, remembering the final request the girl made to see the spirit. After a long pause, the girl got up and went to answer the door. As she opened it, they could all see that the porch light was out and it hadn't been out earlier. My mom said from where she sat, she could see what looked like a dark shadow person standing on the porch. It was just a shadow. There were no facial features. The next thing my mom knew, this girl fell to the ground, passed out. That's when the shadow disappeared. They called an ambulance, but the girl didn't make it. She died on the way to the hospital. She had a heart attack. At least that's what they were told that her heart just stopped for no apparent reason. She was an otherwise healthy young college girl. Because of this story, I have never touched a Ouija board, and my mother never did again either. I don't believe for a second that anything good can come from one. The spirit that's speaking through it may seem nice, but that's because they want to throw you off guard. Then they attack. Their end goal is to possess you, some do it quickly, while others wear you down over a long period of time. But just by playing the game, you're allowing them to speak through you, and you open yourself up to them. The moral of the story? Don't ever play with a Ouija board. And if someone pulls one out, leave the house. Back in college, I met a new friend who claimed she could talk to spirits. I asked her to show me, since I'd been interested in the supernatural for the longest time. She showed me how to create a homemade Ouija board type game by using a piece of paper and a pen. She had me write the word home in the center, yes on the top right corner, no on the top left corner, and goodbye at the bottom. Over the center where I wrote home, we'd hold the pen with the ballpoint facing down so the spirits could use it to answer our questions. Carefully and patiently, we asked the spirit to come through. To my surprise, it actually worked. I asked if it knew my social security number, 
and it slowly wrote it out on the paper. I continued to play the game over the following weeks. The freakiest thing happened when my boyfriend, friends, and I were in my apartment. I convinced one of my girlfriends to play the paper Ouija game with me. We decided to test its accuracy by asking questions we already had the answer to, and it got him right. While playing, my boyfriend and his friend were looking for their lost car keys. I thought maybe we could use the spirit's help to find them, so I asked where the keys were. It wrote on the paper, Sam, 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 over and over. We were a little confused by that because it had nothing to do with finding car keys. So we asked, Are you trying to tell us your name is Sam? The pen went to no on the paper. Then it wrote, Eleven, eleven, eleven. Again we looked at each other confused. Are you trying to tell us you're eleven years old? The pen again went to no. We were both getting pretty frustrated trying to decipher the meaning. Maybe ten minutes passed while we did this. Then my boyfriend and his friend came rushing in the room and said, What did that pen tell you guys? Something about Sam and Eleven? We said yes. They had a look of surprise on their faces and told us to come out to the parking lot. My boyfriend said, You guys won't believe this. I'm a skeptic, but this is crazy. That spirit thing you guys were talking to was right. We found the keys in the car, but check out the license plate of the car parked behind us. We looked, and it was a vanity plate that read, Sam 11. Well, that gave us all chills. Yeah, it worked, but I stopped playing with that game after that. I always thought the stories of Ouija boards were BS, but years ago my mind was changed when I played it with some random people at a get-together. We were talking to all kinds of alleged spirits, and I wasn't taking any of it seriously. Then I thought of a way to test it. I'm Kuwaiti, so I know Arabic. I also knew a young friend of my brother had died recently, so I asked to speak with him. Now, only one person knew me at that get-together, and even they didn't know that much about me. And I was definitely the only one there who could speak Arabic. I was in Oklahoma at the time. So I asked, in Arabic, how my brother's friend had died. And the board spelled out, car crash. I was a bit shocked that they got it right, but I still didn't completely buy it. So I asked again in Arabic, how old he was when he died, and it went to one, then three, and the kid had died at the age of 13. That's when I started really freaking out. No one there could have known those details, let alone have been able to understand my question in Arabic. I asked for more details on the crash, and the board knew he had been thrown from the car. After that, I haven't touched a Ouija board since. When my father was a child, he got a hold of an old Ouija board, and he and his friends were attempting to summon a demon. They all eventually got spooked and threw the Ouija board in the lake. But little did they know, my great-grandmother saw all of this happen, and she retrieved the board from the lake. A few days later, my father and his friends found the Ouija board, warped from the water, sitting on the front porch waiting for them. And they totally lost it. I'm sure my great-grandmother had one hell of a good laugh pulling that prank. I've used a Ouija board with terrifying results. It let something into my home, and I've been physically assaulted by this entity. It all started out with that feeling like you're being watched, then it progressed to doors opening and closing on their own, 
and hearing footsteps on the hardwood floors when I was home alone. It then started keeping me awake at night by shaking the bed or pulling the covers off of me as I tried to sleep. Sometimes, whatever it was, would whisper my name. The Ouija board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places I never would have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then, I saw a black mass in the shape of a man standing in the corner of my room. After that, things escalated rather quickly. I had my hair pulled, face slapped, I was scratched, choked, held down, and I had this thing whispering Latin in my ear, saying things I didn't understand. We had to get the house blessed, and it finally went away. I'll never play with one of those boards again, and I suggest you don't either. I played with the Ouija board several times many years ago. I mainly got dark and scary answers from the spirits, but still, my friends and I started playing all the time with a homemade board. A few weeks later, I was in a club, and from across the room I saw a friend I hadn't seen in maybe two years. He saw me and came running over with a strange look on his face. He said, I can't believe it's you. Look, I have something really strange to tell you, and you have to listen to me. I went to see a psychic, and she told me she had a very important message for a friend of mine, and she said your name. She told me to tell you to stop playing with the Ouija board because you're going to get hurt. Does that make any sense to you? I just stood there speechless and really scared. I don't know if that was for real, but I sure as hell never touched a Ouija board again after that. My cousin and I had been playing around with the Ouija board for a few days, but nothing really happened. Then one day my cousin was lying on the couch with the phone in her hand. She stretched out and put her phone on top of the Ouija board that was on the coffee table. The moment that phone touched the board, it started to vibrate, a red light went off, and what sounded like a ton of people screaming and talking in tongues at the same time came out of the phone. It sounded like the phone was hooked up to a speaker system because it was so loud it filled the entire room. We were terrified. It lasted only a few moments, and then the phone shut itself off. We were so freaked out, we threw the board in the garbage and took it down to the curb. The craziest part? Her phone doesn't even have a red light. I went to see a psychic once, and she said, You're thinking about using a Ouija board. Don't. No good will come of it. But I've always had an interest in the paranormal, and I really wanted to use one. So against her advice, one night I went to a neighbor's house and they pulled out a homemade Ouija board. We asked the board if it had a message for me, and it spelled out, Die, bitch. The spirit identified itself as Satan, and it said that I would be murdered. Then the glass we were using as the planchette flew out of our hands and smashed itself against the wall. Not long after this, I was leaving the house and I heard a male voice say behind me, Die, bitch. I turned around to find a man wielding a claw hammer. He hit me in the head twice before I lost consciousness. I awoke in the hospital with a fractured skull. The police never did catch the guy, and while I've never used the Ouija board again, I still live in constant fear that one day I will be murdered like it predicted. One summer, my friends and I conjured up the spirit of a boy named Jake through the Ouija board. My friends kept asking him to prove he was real. 
We were in the basement of my home, and the board said if we wanted proof that we needed to go upstairs to my bedroom. We all went up there, and we found a box of crayons had been knocked over onto the floor, and a notebook on my bed was opened up. Inside of it, the name Jake was scrawled in big letters using crayon. We had all been together in the basement the entire time, and there was no one else at home. We all got really scared, and somebody said we needed to break the board into pieces to stop the evil. So we did. That was the last time I ever messed around with a Ouija board. A close friend and I used a Ouija board a handful of times over the last few years. Every time we played, the spirit we were speaking to claimed its name was Allison. A good friend of ours named Allison committed suicide eight years ago, so we assumed it was her. Most of the time talking to her, the vibe was good and nothing weird happened. But one night we were playing and suddenly the mood changed. Things became eerie and something didn't feel right. We both sensed it, and we asked if Allison was still with us, and the board said no. We decided to stop playing when the planchette started moving so fast it almost flew out of our hands and off the board. We said goodbye to whatever it was that we let in, and as soon as we did that, the eerie dark feeling went away. My sister and I used the Ouija board a few times when we were teenagers. Every time we used the board, we seemed to communicate with the same spirit. His name was Ed, and Ed would constantly threaten our little brother during the sessions, even though our brother, who was five years old at the time, wasn't playing and he was nowhere near us. It scared us so much that we threw the board away. We never mentioned a word of this to our brother. But years later, as a teenager himself, our brother brought home a friend's Ouija board. After he and his friend used the board a few times, he told us that he was a little freaked out by it because the spirit of somebody named Ed kept threatening him. Our mother banned the Ouija board from the house after that. This happened to my best friend when she was a teenager. She and a few of her friends took the Ouija board to an old church one night. Two of the people there, John and Linda, had dated but then were broken up. My friend sat down next to Linda to use the board. Everyone else just sat there and watched. Before long, they made contact with something and started asking questions. At one point, my friend asked the spirit, Who here do you love the most? The planchette pointed to Linda. She then asked it who it hated the most, and it pointed to John. Well, he got mad thinking that Linda and my friend were messing with him, so he started to walk away. As he did, the planchette pulled away from the girl's hands and the entire board turned to keep pointing towards John as he walked away. Now, this was not a flimsy, cheap board either. It was an old, heavy wooden one, and it required some effort to move smoothly. To test it out, they had John walk in a circle around the board. And sure enough, it turned in a complete 360-degree circle, always pointing to him, with no one touching it. Well, they all noped it out of there, and they never touched a Ouija board again. time my friends and I brought a Ouija board to a very old cemetery and we were able to contact one of the women buried there. Normally I would have suspected it was one of my friends moving the planchette. But here's what happened. You decide for yourself. This cemetery is way out in the country, so there's no lighting. And the moon wasn't full enough to illuminate anything. Our flashlights were the only source of light. 
We walked through the cemetery, set up the board in a clearing, and started asking questions. At first nothing happened, but soon the planchette started to move. We asked who was there, and it spelled out the name, Eliza. I was still very skeptical and wondering which one of these jokers was moving the planchette. Someone asked how old Eliza was when she died, and the board pointed to five, four. We asked if she wanted us to stay with her, and she said yes. Then one of my friends started shining his flashlight on the gravestones around us. One of the stones closest to us read, Eliza Taylor, 1862 to 1916. Well, we freaked out and hightailed it right out of there. A few days later, I googled that cemetery, and I found that some people have reported seeing a lady in period dress beckoning them over to a grave. We think it was this Eliza woman. Very creepy. A few years ago, my mom and I decided to make our own Ouija board out of paper and an overturned glass. We started asking the standard questions like, Is someone there? Yes. Are you alone? Yes. Do we know you? No. Then we asked, Are you human? No. Well, we packed it up pretty quickly after that. I did the best spiritual cleansing I knew how, but after a few weeks of very weird things happening in the apartment, we finally called a medicine man in to cleanse the home properly. Needless to say, we never tried that again. You just never know what's going to come through with a Ouija board, now do you? I would advise you not to use one, but then where would I get my scary stories to tell? If you do use one, be careful and take good notes so you can write the story and submit it to me later. You can always find my email on the screen above and in the description below. Or you can submit it on my subreddit. It's reddit.com forward slash r forward slash daughter of darkness. Now click or tap on the screen above to hear more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends. <laughs>